Hello everybody. Today I'd like to talk about the occupational disease of musicians and Alexander technique. I have prepared some uh, contents and questions about this talking. It includes what is occupational disease? Does the occupational disease of musicians also belong to occupational disease? And next, I will introduce the types of occupational disease of musicians. And I will take some examples of musicians who have been injured by occupational disease. The second part is that I will introduce of the uh, I will introduce the Alexander technique. And finally, I will play the video teaching of Alexander technique. The firstly is that what is occupational disease? There is an ex explanation of international labor organization. They said disease had disease that have been identified or strongly associated with exposure to physical, chemical, biological, or mental um, or mental factors at work. And these environmental factors are the obvious causative factors. As for musicians, they also have this disease. But does the occupational disease of musicians also belong to occupational disease? The answer definitely is yes. Because, because when musicians have symptoms of occupational disease, they just like pro professional athletes. Musicians have symptoms of occupational disease, which are long-term damages that cannot be ignored. For me, I also have, I also suffer from occupational di disease. For example, if I practice playing the piano for a long time, I will I will uh, find I will have spinal spinal pain and will back ache. Additionally, my eyes will not uh, my eyes will uncomfortable. So, in the following parts, I will introduce the types of occupational disease of musicians. Firstly is physical occupational disease. It includes hearing damage. There is an obvious example like Beethoven. Hearing damage is the ultimate cause of his death. Because of that, he has alcohol abuse and leads to liver cirrhosis. And next is muscle soreness. Well, in the muscle soreness, I think some musicians who play brass wine instrument maybe have this disease. And uh, some musicians who have uh, who is who is singing will will have vocal nodules. And next is deep neck disease. Some musicians who play violin will have this disease and so on. The secondly is psychological occupational disease. It, it, it includes anxiety disorders, psychological pressure, and psychological barriers. It was a problem in public performance for some of musicians. For example, I had a recital last year, but because uh, because of the psychological pressure, I can't eat anything food. So it's really nervous and I have a big pressure. Next, I will take some example of musicians. The first people is Schumann. Schumann have hand injury due to excessive practice. And there, there are two musicians named Fleischer and Grafman. They suffer from focal dystonia. 
But what is focal dystonia? Focal dystonia means that this symptom occurs in certain parts of the body, such as playing action. It usually happens in the stage of professional performance. For example, musicians will lack of control on speed, accurate, and strength of performing. In simple terms, this is an obstacle of action. And pianist Lang Lang suffer from tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis, which is a serious disease, and it means after a long period of working on hands, the pain, com the pain becomes worse when the finger is moving. So in order to solve this problem or solve this occupational disease, Alexander Technique played a key role. In the second part, I will introduce uh, I will introduce Alexander Technique. What is Alexander Technique? This is a mind-body learning module. It helps us understand and how to use our body and mind more efficiently. It also, it also retrains our mind to observe and receive message from the body. Besides, learning how to face and solve this inertial limitation and muscle and, and muscle tensions to regain the balance comfort. Some people will ask the origin of Alexander. Alexander techniques comes from a stage actor named Alexander. When he when he playing in the stage, he also have occupational disease. He think psychological problems caused by the larynx produce a set of economic ways to use the body, and he also think the key point of act. Alexander techniques is that uh, control and control it includes three aspects it includes perceive restrain and guidance now we're watching a video about Alexander technique naturally was, well, natural. But over time, tension and strain can become a normal part of life. All you want is to feel comfortable, relaxed, and energetic. You've tried a few things, but to no avail. You try to sit up straight at your desk, but after a few minutes, you feel too stiff, so you slouch. And that's no good either. Exercise is great, but pretty soon you find yourself straining at that too. You may think that strain, tension, and pain are just inevitable parts of getting older, but they're not. There is a solution, and you have it in you. That natural way you moved as a young child is still there. You picked up a lot of habits that get in your way, and those habits have taken control of your body while you're just along for the ride. Fortunately, there's a way you can unlearn those habits and relearn what's natural, and it's called the Alexander Technique. AMSAT certified teachers of the Alexander Technique have the knowledge and training to help you learn how to get back into the driver's seat of your own body. This awareness will help you deal with stress without stressing your body. It's just common sense that's right within your reach, and it's supported by scientific research. For over 100 years, the Alexander Technique has helped countless people move more comfortably, safely, and efficiently, from Olympic athletes to world-class performers to people like you and me. A teacher can show you how to tune into what's really happening in your body, so you can stop getting in your own way. Once you learn how, Moving naturally becomes second nature, and that will stay with you for the rest of your life. Your body knows what to do. Find an AMSAT certified Alexander Technique teacher near you and help it remember. Until now, many performers want to join Alexander Technique's courses. So next, I will introduce the courses contents of Alexander Techniques. 
Alexander Techniques has no fixed se a series of actions. In a course, the teacher will guide the students to re-examine -ex their mental and physical response inertia in simple movements, like um, sitting, standing, or lying down. Alexander techniques also have many benefits. Like avoid, it can avoid physical and mental pain. And it can help you maintain correct posture and it can improve stress and psychological and emotional problems. Let's watch in the second video that is a stage performers who are getting help of Alexander's technique. place of really being like down and, and really in with just myself and this to really being up and out and focus on my scene partner. Earlier tonight I said something to you. We tend to get so locked in our own patterns and the work is so much about changing those patterns. Alexander Technique is about the individual and your kind of your habits and your inhibition. So it's it's just it's very unique to the person. So everybody has a different experience with the Alexander Technique. I would say it helps you live more truthfully in the given imaginary circumstances by taking away the artifice that one, one creates around acting and just puts you on display as yourself truthfully in this it's, it's really transforming work and it's probably one of, it's one of my favorite classes here and as an actress I think it's helped me the most. The Alexander technique can be very emotional. People will do cry sometimes, but it's, it's wonderful. It's like liberating. People feel so much better afterwards. It's so much freer. According to the second video, it also suits the musicians. Because Alexander Techniques is a serious action which can help performers relax their body. In conclusion, if, if we want to avoid occupational disease, we should make some prevention like um, doing exercise or any if you have any discomforts should be treated in time. The lastly is that Teachers should teaching teachers should teaching proper posture and some methods of relaxation when teaching. For example, 
There is a series of actions can help musicians solve spinal, spinal pain. Feet and shoulder wide apart and the palm for the high and head up with suction and expiration and down slowly. In addition to that, there are another solution to avoid occupational disease of musicians. Students and musicians can do in stretch after practicing instruments. Besides, if you major in wide instruments, you can bring earplugs in order to avoid hearing damages, and so on. Finally, I hope this video can help some people who engage in music performers better solve problems related to occupational disease. Thank you. Alexander Technique, a unique approach to changing your life by changing your posture. Hello, my name is William Hurt, and it is my fortunate privilege today to serve two undemanding and happy functions. One is to be a student, to let myself learn, to fall back and let an expert teach me. The other is to introduce you to my teacher. Jane Kosminski will demonstrate her understanding of human energy in a technique that can permit any person to discover and utilize an endless resource within themselves. I have the happy job to surrender to an adventure Jane will guide. The brief, exciting trip she and I will take together today was first undertaken by an intrepid, generous, compassionate individual named F.M. Alexander. She will tell us all about that and more. Any difficulty for me is now over, as it is my great privilege to introduce to you Jane Kosminski. Thank you, William. You're welcome, Jane. I guess I better do something to earn that high praise. Now we're going to learn a little bit about how the Alexander Technique actually works. And to do this, I have my favorite model, Blanche. And I'm going to show you, William, you want to take that? Mm -hmm. What really goes on? The head is extremely heavy. It weighs between 12 and 15 pounds worth of weight. That heavy, heavy head sits at the end of the smallest, most vulnerable part of the spine. The spine actually acts as a unit. So whatever the head is doing is going to affect the whole. So if we are compressing down like this, we may be having pain in any part of our backs with that one. As we actually begin to release the neck, to free the neck, and allow the head to rotate forward and up, this is what starts to happen. And that's really the truth. We can go from here to here just by thinking. We begin in Alexander with observation. What are you doing? What am I doing? Inhibition, choosing not to respond habitually. And then something we call direction. Direction is composed of the four concepts, Alexander's four concepts of good use. To let the neck be free, to let the head be forward and up away from the top of the spine. To allow the torso to lengthen and fan into width to allow the legs to release away from the hip joint, and to allow the shoulders to release out to the side and float 
on the rib cage. When we think our directions using these concepts of good use, we make an enormous change in the body. This is a miracle, this body. And the Alexander Technique teaches us how to use that miracle easily, efficiently, with pleasure. Blanche. Thank you, Blanche. <laughs> would you like to do a little work? I would love to. Okay. We're going to do classic Alexander work. We're going to take a look at how William gets in and out of a chair. Why do we do this particular work? We do classically, traditionally in Alexander, work on the chair, work on the table. The chair work is particularly powerful because it teaches us how to use, we can first of all, well it teaches us how to use our joints efficiently, but we can examine immediately how you do use your joints and what might be possible in terms of change if we just watch you getting in and out of a chair because you have to use your knees, your ankles, your hips, the neck, head, spine relationship. And so we learn a lot. And I'm going to invite you all to join us so that you can begin your own process of observation. And we're going to take a really close look at William. You ready? Come on. Okay. Wait. Notice what happens already. Can you see yourself revved mm. to get out of the chair? Mm. Okay, great. So we've observed something. Take a moment to think, just to notice what your neck and head are doing, and just to let your neck be free, and to let your head move up. And even now, without any hands-on work, just let your head lead you right up. Fabulous. Let's go.